Grace and peace to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Creator, our Savior, our Sustainer. My name is Ken Carter, and I serve, have the joy of serving as the resident bishop of the Florida Conference of the United Methodist Church. We are offering this worship service to you, we the appointed cabinet, uh, on Labor Day weekend. It's intended to be uh, offered by churches on September 6th, but you may uh, decide to share it on another day and you may be worshiping on another day. Exodus 20 verse 11 tells us that God made the heavens and the earth in six days and on the seventh day God rested. Literally on the seventh day God caught God's breath. That is the origin of our Sabbath day. The Sabbath is a day of rest and recovery. And so we hope this service is a gift to musicians, technicians, worship leaders, pastors who have faithfully been offering worship to the Lord over these several months of the pandemic. We hope that this is a time for you to catch your breath, uh, and we want to thank you for your faithfulness. As we think about catching our breath, we also pause to remember in this time those doing essential work on our behalf to make our lives and, and uh, our everyday lives possible. Uh, sometimes that essential work is risk-taking work. We also pause to remember in this pandemic those uh, who are on ventilators uh, and who suffer greatly. Florida, our state, has had over 500,000 persons to test positive for this virus and over 8,000 persons to die from this virus. And we pause to reflect uh, on uh, the words this summer, I can't breathe, words that remind us uh, of the racism that is a reality uh, and the work of anti-racism that is our journey. And so we offer this worship service to you to glorify God, to allow you to catch your breath and to reflect on the goodness, the mercy, the providence, and the salvation of God.
the waters of Northwest Florida call me to a place of Sabbath, rest, and peace. I live on Lake Talquin outside of Tallahassee, fed by the Oklahoma River that eventually runs into the Gulf of Mexico. This combination of river and lake brings peace to my soul. Hear these words from one of my favorite hymns. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Let us pray. Patient Lord, we schedule our lives down to the very second. We crowd in as much activity as we can and then wonder why we are so stressed out and tired. We are afraid to miss out on anything. And when it comes to the time we can be with others or with you, we spend our time worrying about the details rather than longing for the visit. Forgive us when we get so caught up in the details and miss the opportunity to sit and be with you, to sit at your feet, to listen, to learn, to grow together in our faith. Help us to place ourselves, O oh Lord, in your care. Slow us down, Lord, just a bit so that we can see the wonders you have placed before us and truly enjoy and share the blessings you have given to us all. We ask this in the holy name of Jesus, our Savior and friend. Amen. And now hear these words of assurance. On the seventh day of creation, God rested, creating a Sabbath, a time set apart for rest, to learn, to listen, to be quiet and at peace. Let Sabbath take root in your heart and in your life. Be at peace in God's love for you. Amen and amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 58. I'll be reading verses 13 and 14 from the New Revised Standard Version. Hear now the word of the Lord. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interest on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going in your own ways, serving your own interest, are pursuing your own affairs. Then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestors, Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
As we come to our prayer time, I want to lead us in a call and response prayer. I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you will respond by saying, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we pray for the church throughout the world and in our local communities that her members, ministers, and ministries may be agents of transformation, may be agents of forgiveness, and agents of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, our leaders, and all who labor to make this country free, all who labor to make this place a haven of blessing, a place of justice, and where we can all experience peace throughout the land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world that you would pass through our lands and once again bring freedom, once again bring hope, once again bring life for all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the suffering, those who are fearful, and all who live in the wake of terror. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we give thanks for, for the work that you have for us to do. Hear our prayers on this day of rest. We pray that you would be present with those who work by day and those who work by night, that you would be present with those who work nearby and those who wor whose work carries them far away. And we pray for those in this uncertain time, those who have no job, those who have no shelter, those who have no security, all who suffer directly and indirectly from the COVID-19 virus. Lord, hear our prayer and may you come and bless us, guide us, teach us, reveal to us how we can be the church in our time, in our places. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Mold us, we pray. Amen. And now as we come to this time of receiving our offering, I want to share with you a story about a little boy in our community. He just started coming to worship here at Cypress Lake just a, a few weeks before we had to all shut down back in March. And as I pulled up to the front door of the sanctuary, I noticed this young boy, and he was carrying a palm uh, frond like this one. And as I pulled up, he was running around the circle in front of, of the church, and he was running with this, and he was holding it up. And as he came by, and I was standing there, I called him over, and I learned his name. It, it, it was Matthew. And as I was saying, Matthew, come tell me, what are you doing? And he said, I remember that you taught us that we are the light of Christ and we're supposed to carry the light of Christ. And I was just practicing. What a great story. See, that's what we are called to do. We're supposed to practice carrying the light of Christ out into the world in which we live, to shine the light of Christ into the dark corners of our communities, to bring hope and peace, love and joy. And so let me just say thank you. Thank you for the ways that you have been supporting the life of your congregation. Thank you for the ways that you have reached out to your communities to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to bring shelter to those who are homeless. These are uncertain times, but this is the time that God has called us to be the church, to love and to rejoice in knowing that God's call upon our lives is to practice carrying the light 
for the world. And so may you give of your offering at this time so that we can continue to build the kingdom of God here, there, and everywhere. Amen. Our second scripture reading comes from the Old Testament book of Exodus. I'll be reading chapter 20, verses 8 through 11 from the New Revised Standard Version. Before I get started, I wanted to add the heart emoji to this second scripture reading. Oftentimes, we send a heart emoji to remind someone that they are loved. So today, remember, you are loved. God loves you, we love you, and we are in this together. Hear now the word of the Lord. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For in six days you shall labor and do all of your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, and you shall not do any work, you, nor your son or your daughter, nor your male or female servants, not even your livestock, not even the aliens in your town. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything that's within them. But on the seventh day, the Lord rested. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. This is the word of God for the people of God. And let's say together, thanks be to God. Greetings and happy Lord's Day to all who are joining us for worship this morning. We are good to have you with us. I'm Reverend June Edwards. I'm the superintendent of the North Central District, home of some of the most beautiful natural resources that are found in the state, as well as, of course, the great University of Florida and Gator Wesley Campus Ministry, the Warren W. Willis Youth Camp and the Life Enrichment Center, as well as 86 fabulous churches who are serving faithfully in mission throughout the various contexts in which they are located. As Bishop Carter shared in his introduction, we are providing this worship service as a way to offer a time of rest to all of the pastors and musicians, staff, technicians, and others who have been faithfully serving week after week in order to bring worship to you in this time of global pandemic. We know it has been exhausting, and we are glad to help provide this support as a cabinet to each of you. And so it seemed the theme of, of Sabbath was especially fitting for this worship service today. You know, Sabbath was so important that it was included in the law, or the Torah, the Ten Commandments, by which the people of Israel were to be defined. The text this morning that you heard read already is a part of the Torah instruction. If you look closely, you will see that the first three commandments have everything to do with God that there's only one God, that uh, you should have no other gods or idols or anything that you value more than God. And that whenever you speak the Lord's name, you should speak it with honor and reverence because just being able to say God is the most precious gift that we can have. And so then you find the, the last six commandments that tell us about ourselves and how we are to live and how we are to treat others. We're to honor our parents. We are to not commit murder or adultery or to lie or to steal or to uh, have, be wanting other people's goods and belongings. The linchpin, in my opinion, is the fourth commandment which is to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. You see, if we remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, God knew that if we took time and stopped, that we could focus ourselves and our lives back on God. And then as we heard God and listened to God and found our life in God, then naturally we would turn toward how we are treating others. In fact, um, you, by honoring our parents and, and treating one another well, it puts our lives back in order. You know, Jesus' summary of the greatest commandment was that of loving God and neighbor. And of course, he was right on point there. And so to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy puts our lives in right order. 
In fact, in God's design, the Sabbath is the critical piece for living out our lives as God's people in the world. For the people of Israel, keeping Sabbath was about as serious as one could get. In fact, if you read closely, you will see that to violate the Sabbath, the punishment was death. If you have participated in the Summer in the Scripture reading through the Gospels with Bishop Carter this summer, you can't help but notice that a big point of contention between the religious leaders and Jesus was what could and could not happen on the Sabbath. For Jesus was healing people on the Sabbath. And whether it was in a, in a home, on a roadside, or in the synagogue, and they took great issue and exception because they had their own rules and regulations and had determined exactly what was appropriate for our behavior on the Sabbath. And so Jesus' response to this was, remember, the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. And it was a reminder to us that the Sabbath is God's gift to us. I once read an article about the purpose and function of architecture. It was during a time when I was serving a church that was undergoing uh, a big building and expansion project. Maybe because my my husband's a, a contractor that it really caught my attention, but I really had never thought before about what an architect does. And the article went on to say that an architect takes empty space, air, and designs a building and a structure in such a way that it defines the space and the, pur- and the building for a particular purpose, where life is to be lived out meaningfully and purposefully and productively there. I would say God, the, the architect of our world and our lives, and in fact, all of life, has defined the space of Sabbath in a particular way. It's the space that we enter into to learn how to live with God and with one another. Sabbath says, stop, pay attention to your life, to your relationship with God and with one another, and your connection with the world around you and all of creation. In fact, the beauty and wonder of creation, which which is what helps us name the context of our lives. Literally, this this space and this structure of Sabbath defines how we live and move and ultimately directs us toward the one that gives our life meaning. Sabbath is the means by which we are to stop, to look around, to remember that it is God that made us, that we're not the creators of our own lives. In fact, that God is the one that said to stop, and in fact, the scripture tells us that God God's self stopped and rested. So Sabbath for us is to remember who is God and we are not God. And in fact, it tells us that God is not a workaholic. God worked six days and rested on the seventh. We should take note and we miss that important point at our peril. So Sabbath is the means by which God helps us get a hold of ourselves and our lives, and thus we become the healed, whole, and holy people that God intended us to be. So within the structure of Sabbath, we discover that it is sacred and holy space that God invites us to enter into so that we can find rest and renewal and refreshment so that we can be refocused for the next six days to come. You know, I can't imagine that any architect would design a building for people to just stand outside and look at and observe. Rather, they invite us to come in. And the same is true with God. And even worse, can you imagine an architect designing a building that is not even noticed and that we pass on by? What a waste and what a complete dismissal of the means by which we could enter into a space and discover the beauty and wonder of its perfect intention. And that is God's use of Sabbath place. I've just returned from renewal leave myself, an extended Sabbath of sorts. And I recognize I'm grateful for the time and the space 
to be able to do this. And I also came to see how much I needed rest and renewal. We spent good time with our children and, and grandchildren and did it by safely distancing and following all of the guidelines that we have to follow right now. But I was able to hold and feed and change and, and bathe and sing to our infant granddaughter and how life renewing that is. I prepared and we shared meals together with family and, and friends. I sat on the porch in the mountains and listened to the water sing in, in the stream nearby. And the most beautiful bird song, I would say of my favorite bird that I have never laid eyes on before. And watched in amazement the constantly changing view of the mountains, depending on the position of the sun and the sky or the size and the number of the clouds. We found time to be at the beach, and, and I watched as a, a dog uh, re being released from its leash jumped and ran and leapt with just pure, unleashed joy. I watched the dolphin roll offshore, and children who set up the most amazing ice cream shop in the sand, and a dad who needs to get first prize, the golden cup, for eating every last exotic ice cream sundae that they prepared for him. My husband looked over it to me and, and he said, did you know sand moves? I said, what? He said, yes, at first I thought that there were insects in the sand causing it to move. But as he lay there and just watched the clumps of sand as the water evaporated from him, they began to crumble and fall apart. And he just said, and the sand is moving out there all the time. That's being able to stop and rest and notice. My mind and my spirit and my body found healing as I soaked in the life-giving water of the ocean and as I became connected again to creation, one of the most powerful ways to experience Sabbath. Finding and entering Sabbath is the means that God gave us for entering fully into the space of the life that God designed for us, that, that structure, if you will, it is truly the pivotal connection between our relationship with God and neighbor. In the Jewish tradition, Sabbath begins on Friday evening with worship. The Jewish theologian and philosopher Abraham Heschel said of, of the people of God and of Sabbath, it was as if a whole people were in love with the seventh day. That's our challenge as a people of God to be in love with the structure and the idea and the space of Sabbath that God has given us. As, as the people of, of Israel and in Jewish tradition, when they gather together, they, they remember and they are remembered back together. And each of our lives individually and communally are put back together. You know, there is intention about observing the Sabbath. The, the words in scripture say, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. In these strange times, we are all yearning to be back in a physical structure, a building, this place we call a sanctuary. But do not forget that the, that is not the space that I'm talking about here. The space that I'm talking about that God has created for us cannot be defined by just a building. It's the space we enter into as we focus our lives upon God. So yes, we want to get back to church, but God has given us this gift, this gift of time to discover that we can worship differently and in many different ways, whether it's virtually, whether it's outside, or whether it is spaced far apart um, inside a building. God has said that there is far more to worship and Sabbath than gathering in a building. God has given us the space and the time of Sabbath, and it is a good gift. And now, especially, we have the opportunity to reclaim that gift and to learn what it means to sit with God and family and friends, whether in person, safely, or virtually, through the miracle of technology, so that we can listen for God 
and watch for God in order that we can learn to love like God. On this Labor Day weekend, we honor and pray for all of those who work long hours to provide food and shelter and protection and resources for us all. And we pray for those who struggle to find Sabbath rest this day. And we pray for those who have been displaced through loss of their job and their income. Yet we have this promise for us all that as we remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, as we draw close to God and one another, we find that healing and wholeness and holiness that is God's gift for all of us. So on that seventh day when God rested, may you on the seventh day find rest. And may your Sabbath be full and blessed this day. Amen. As we come to this time of receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion, I invite you to push pause and just uh, go to your kitchen and pick out maybe a piece of bread or cracker, whatever you have, uh, water, uh, juice, whatever, and then come back to the, to the television or to the computer, whatever you're watching this service on, and uh, come and be ready to receive this blessing, uh, this uh, passage of encouragement uh, knowing that your past is forgiven and your future is restored and prepared for what God has in, planned for your life. As we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's table on this Labor Day, may we remember the laborers in the fields, the harvesters of wheat and grapes, those who transform wheat into bread and grapes into juice, Bless their hands and feet as they labor at farms and gardens, in trucks and warehouses. After laboring on the streets of Jerusalem, doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with God, Jesus clutched bread in his hands. He blessed the food, gave thanks, and heartfully expressed to his friends that this was the bread of life. So as you eat this bread, Jesus said, remember me. And after supper, Jesus grasped the cup filled with the gift of the vine. In his blessing, he reminded all of his friends, whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. Spirit of wisdom and of wonder, be present to us in these elements. May they stir us from stagnation into actively loving God, to actively loving our neighbor to actively loving ourselves. May our participation at this table transform us into the people God is calling us to be. With gratitude, we gather at this table. As we take a piece of bread, let us experience the love of God as seen in Jesus Christ. As we receive the cup, let us remember the grace that comes from God alone. My friends, the body of Christ, broken for you, for all, take and eat this in remembrance of him. The blood of Christ poured out for you. So as we gather in multitude of places, in multitude of ways, we receive the sacrament, the body of Christ, broken for us, the blood of Christ poured out for us. Take, eat, and drink in remembrance 
of him. Let us pray. Lord, we, your humble servants, lay our lives before you. Come and stir within us. See those dark places of our lives. Shine your light into them. And may we walk from this place forward with confidence, knowing that you are the light and that you are the love for all humanity. May our light, your light, shine through us to be a beacon of hope for a broken world. And we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, who lived, who taught, and who died for us. Amen. Sisters and brothers, go in the peace of Christ. Go into a hurting world, a world that needs you, and go with God on your hearts and your hands. Go to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.